Hello and welcome to the show. I am back here on Forza Horizon 4 building a, another vehicle to take on our hill climb stage. The requested car this time around is the Lotus Esprit V8. A car that I very much like and a car that I know is a very, very good vehicle. However, for this series we're building cars, of course, to A-Class. The Esprit starts, well, halfway through A-Class, which does mean we don't have very much PI to play around with whatsoever in the car. In fact, I'm a little bit concerned we won't get race tyres on the vehicle full stop. Uh, we are... <laughs> uh, we are just going to get race tyres. That's not ideal. That is all of the PI gone, basically. Here's the thing, though. I need race tyres on the cars. Uh, now, some of you might say, well, why wouldn't I go with sport tyres and do other bits and pieces? The simple fact of the matter is, if you don't have race tyres on your vehicle, it will be terrible. We had two cars not run with race tyres on this course, the M4 that sent the benchmark and a 2018 Ford Mustang because it couldn't get the race tyres on it. And both of those are in the, well, 132.7 is the fastest of them from the Mustang. It just doesn't work. Because the stage we're on is pure cornering, that's all you're doing is constant, constant cornering. Oh crap, I'd hope that might lower PI, it doesn't. Bugger. Um, yeah, because you're constantly cornering, you need you need race tyres. They make such a big difference to the vehicle's performance, nothing else will be able to even remotely get close to the sort of gains you get with race tyres, uh, that we essentially have to have it on a car if it's going to be any good. Uh, so you're going for lower grade tyres and saving weight or something does not make up for the grip that you get from race tyres on spe well, other, other routes, other roads, other races may be, but for what we're doing here being a pure handling thing, uh, we don't have another option. Uh, and I can't actually do much with the car here. I was hoping there's going to be uh, some sort of sneaky... Uh, okay, we're going to get big engines. I didn't... I'd say, not that I would be allowed to swap the engines. I was curious if we could get anything silly in it. Uh, but no. Uh, there's not really much... <laughs> not really much that I can do with this one. Uh, I'm guessing every engine part... Nothing's going to add one PI from the engine part. I don't even know if I'd want power anyway on this. I guess we can try and sneak in... I mean, we're going to try and sneak in things like gearbox, things like flywheel, uh, driveline maybe we can sneak in an upgrade on. Uh, gearbox will fit, that might fit as well. The clutch doesn't really make much difference on this game. I did put the diff in because that's a free upgrade, basically. Uh, oh, and I wasn't actually, didn't even look if we can get, maybe brakes are more important. Brakes are probably more important. Suspension, what's that going to be? That's 2 PI for what I'd really want. Yeah, okay, maybe sus maybe brakes are more important than going for this sort of guff. Go away. Go away. Standard gearbox, I'm hoping, is okay. We'll dump out the flywheel. Because uh, I forgot I hadn't done brakes. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not guessing we're not going to get much room for this stuff. I can't even get full, full race. I can't do that. Can I do that? I can. That's going to be... Oh, I can't do it at the rear, though. That's going to be important. Oh, roll cage might... Ah, perfect. Roll cage adds a little bit of weight, drops the PI down, and that should be able to get us brakes... Uh, might get a suspension? No, uh, no, I guess it's better suspension. Can we go full race brakes than the car? No, we can't go full race. But we can then probably get things like the flywheel and the driveline back in again. Uh, that stage of that will do. I mean, it's not going to be great. It's certainly not going to be anywhere near ideal for this. Can I do any of these? Yes, I might as well. We know uh, that this does help a little bit and doesn't always cost a PI, so I might as well get it where I can. I mean, it's a good vehicle. It's a good vehicle, the Esprit. 350 horsepower, though, at near £3,000. Power to weight is not going to be enough for the car. A good chassis and so on to begin with. What are we on? Our 285 tyres aren't too shabby. And to, I'd like much bigger, of course, at the front. We're not going to get it. I uh, don't think you're going to let's get bigger rears either. No. In theory, a very, very good base vehicle, but we are very limited in, in upgrades. I think it'll be half decently fast, but we're not going to be challenging the top. So, here we are on the start line with our Lotus. I will be having three attempts up the course to try and go as quickly as possible. I've got a kitten on the desk currently, Eve. We try to be Distracto Cat currently. Yes, we are going to have three attempts and one Distracto Cat. Uh, <laughs> try and get the Lotus up here as fast as possible. Now, the fastest time of 23.6 set by the 340R is way out of reach. 
for this car, I'm afraid. Uh, if we can be going, probably looking 27s, I would expect to be about as good as we will get from the Esprit. As I said, it's likely to be a good handling car, and it's got a half-decent amount of power. Uh, it is a little bit on the heavier side than some other vehicles. We'll have to wait and see how it goes. It's actually a little bit more oversteery than I would like, ideally. Of course, we don't have any even Forza Aero to work with, so we're lacking a little bit of downforce. It's just what we've got to work with here. <laughs> this is the, the limitations, if you like, of this, of this car. Uh, it's, it's not terrible to drive, do not get me wrong, through these opening corners. It's not a terrible to drive car, certainly not going to be flat through there. Maintaining decent speed on the exit, certainly. You know, we're hovering around the mid-70 miles an hour for the exit there. Is is up there with, you know, half-decent cars, not there with the very fastest, but it's pretty solid, all things considered. Uh, we will be flat through there, no problems at all. Uh, we don't want to be playing with the dirt, particularly through here. But I can get away with a little bit later on the brakes. And that's into that hairpin, which is nice to know. I mean, the brakes are solid on this. They're not going to be quite as good as, you know, as full race brakes. However, they are pretty decent to getting the car slowed down. Actually, not a terrible... It's not an awful, awful speed to the penultimate hairpin. One more corner to go for the Esprit. This is probably more a testament to the strengths of the base car than anything. And we are around the final turn. That's actually pretty bloody fast. <laughs> that is a good... That is a very, very good first run. A 126.9 from the car. That is better than I was expecting by quite a long way. Um, that is quite a lot better than I was expecting. Uh, so... Okay, it's not going to beat the 340R, but it's not going to be a terrible disappointment. Well, we have one pretty decent run in the bank for the Esprit. It's on to our second attempt. I mean, I'm not sure where I'm going to find time. You always hope that you can find some time with a second run through the course. I'm not quite sure where I am yet. There's no real glaring errors, no real big mistakes. I mean, just make sure we're not slipping and sliding the car around the place is always a good idea. There is a tiny bit of oversteer. It's a lot more manageable than some cars have been up here, and I'm sure future cars uh, will be. Yeah, if you push it like an absolute, absolute lunatic, it will slide around, but on the whole, very, very controlled. I mean, you always expect a Lotus to have a base level of being good handling, uh, but this is faster than I thought it was going to go from basically no upgrades. I mean, we've managed to fiddle around with it a little bit to get as, as much, you know, potential out of the car as I can. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's not too shabby. That was uh, interesting through that corner. I managed to kind of link it all together. I'm not 100% sure it's the fastest way through, but it's the way we got through it. It's a nice, easy car. It's an easy car to drive up here, easy car to place, if you like, around the around the course. We could definitely be uh, perhaps a little braver on the brakes here, I think. Although, oh, I've lost the back end on this run, which is not really what you want. Uh, maybe too much on the dirt through there will hinder our exit slightly. Yeah, lost the back going over a crest. That's not quite helpful or ideal. I don't think we're going... No, we're not going faster. This has been a scruffy... It's been a scruffy end to this run. I was now trying to be a bit braver with the brakes, and that's cost us a heap of time in a couple of places. And, yeah. Terrible end. Terrible end to the run with the Esprit. Overdrove it. Rubbish time. <laughs> I was in the 28. That, was, that 28 was more of the sort of time I was perhaps expecting to see from the car. Uh, yeah. Let's, uh, we can forget about that run, and we will hope to do better on the, on the final, final go. We're on to the final run with our Lotus. Fingers crossed I can maybe do it a little bit neater this time around up the course if we're going to find any more time than the 26.9. Uh, just sim simply overdriving the car on that last one got the better of me. So we'll have to be... See, again, it's always a difficult one, especially when you do set a very a surprisingly fast first run and you're going searching for that extra little bit of time. Uh, it's very, very easy to, you know, try and break that a little bit later and end up making a bit of a mess of a particular corner. And once you've messed up one, it's very difficult to recover almost. This is a, this is a, t it's a tough route. This is a tough hill climb for the vehicles here. And if things start going a little bit wrong, it's very easy to kind of compound the problem. Been a fairly decent start for the Esprit. Done a little bit of grass cutting that I'd perhaps rather not have done, but 
We've got away with that without too many problems. No slithering around on the way in here, which is nice. Holding about 70 miles an hour through there. It's not as fast mid-corner as some. We don't expect it to be. It's certainly not got... Oh, that's a little wide. We'll get away with it, but I feel like we might have lost a tiny little smidge of speed mid-corner. Again, no problems flat through all of that. Now, this hairpin has been tricky. Yeah, let's not go out too wide. Let's not upset the back of the car uh, across that crest. Uh, I don't think we've really seen too many cars. Well, this is perhaps the first vehicle, one of the very few vehicles to run without Forza Aero. So perhaps, yeah, we haven't seen cars sliding around as much there, uh, just because they've got a little bit of downforce. This has got some, but of course nowhere near as much as would be ideal. Seems like a decent run, though. We've not had any big, obvious mistakes, not had any big Larry moments. Little bit wide on the final corner, though. Ah! Uh, as you said, no big Larry mistakes. We just got on the power fraction too soon. We will still go faster, though. 126.3 for the Lotus. That is actually very, very respectable. That is, that is very, very respectable indeed for the car. Uh, not, not at all what I was expecting. Not at all what I was expecting from the Lotus. Uh, when you have essentially one PI to work with once you put on the race tyres. Uh, we managed to fiddle around with, a, you know, getting bits and pieces on, on the car. Um, but yeah, one PI to work with is not easy. We've got no race error. We don't have full race brakes and neither do we have proper race suspension on the car. And yet, all of that said, it's actually going to go into 8th place. It beats the Civic RS, the Lamborghini Miura, Mercury Coupe, Renault Clio RS. Uh, loses out fractionally to the BMW M1. It's sort of four tenths of a second down on the Lotus Exige S and the Honda NSX. For a car missing a bunch of the kind of critical components, that's damn impressive. It goes to show just how good the basic chassis is almost, if you like. The basic bits on the Esprit are. If you can go that quickly uh, <laughs> with this with this configuration, with this limited amount of PI, limited build, that's bloody fast. That is bloody fast. I mean, of course, the hill climb stage is always going to work well with Lotuses and so on, but that's a lot better than I expected and probably a lot better than most of you were expecting when you saw how little PI we had to work with. But there we go. An excellent showing from the Esprit. That's will be it for today as ever if you have a request for vehicles you would like to see run this course please do leave them in the comment section below the most liked comment as long as it is a car that i can acquire slash can afford and so on that will fit within the class uh, that shall be run next time out who knows who knows what we will be racing. Maybe it will be as big a surprise as this Esprit. And that will be it from me, though. Thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, a goodbye.